fight ramps. Do you like them? Do you use them? Do I like them? Well, it depends. I'll tell you everything about it right after this. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. Now, if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell so you will be notified every time we upload a new video. We upload at least one new video a week. And give us the thumbs up, it makes us so happy. Byte ramps were introduced with the G5 protocol. Now, a line almost every year they they come up with a new protocol to i mean they're improving the product and i think it started with g3 then g4 g5 g6 g7 and now we're at g8 i guess the next g will be g string the g5 protocol was um was there for uh deep bite cases to improve um how we treat debite cases to improve the success with debite cases and uh, there were a couple of things in that protocol but one of the new things they introduced was the bite ramps the idea behind the bite ramps is to disocclude the posterior teeth to relieve the pressure because in these cases sometimes well a lot of times we want to uh, open the bite and depending on your treatment plan, you may want to intrude the anterior teeth, you may want to uh, extrude the posterior teeth, or maybe you want to do a combination of both. Well, it's hard to already to extrude teeth. I mean, any vertical uh, movement is hard with clear aligners, especially extrusion. So if you're trying to extrude posterior teeth, it's extremely difficult. So you need a good mechanics, you need a good understanding of your, your mechanics. Think of a patient with really big masseters who would bite all the time and make a big pressure on the molars. They're, they're um, working against what you're trying to do with the teeth. So the idea with bite ramps is to disocclude the, uh, the posterior teeth to relieve this pressure and then to allow extrusion of the posterior teeth like we're trying to do in our treatment. So this is good. I like this. I, I mean, the idea, I really like the theory behind it. The problem is, the problem is, now stay with me. Listen, let's, let's look at teeth. This is what we like to do. Let's look at teeth. Let's look at a case and I will explain to you why sometimes I don't like the bite ramps. Now let's take this case here. It's a deep bite case with a class two div two profile. Now I know you dentist. I know you very well. When you see something like this, what do you want to do? What is your first reaction? You let's say let's imagine that the teeth would all be in soft wax. What would you do with the thumb? Well, where would you push? What what would be the first thing you would like to do? I know. Yeah, you would like to take these two central incisors and just push on them. Yeah, you would like to procline them. This is it's like a second nature for us. This is what we want to do. Well, now just imagine that you will have bite trans because in a case like this, a lot of times the software, the ClinCheck, they uh, will propose to have bite trans because it's a deep bite case. And a lot of times it, it comes like almost naturally in the software. And there's a deep bite, they apply the G5 protocol, therefore you have bite ramps now think of what bite ramps are this is this is how they look in the prescription most prescription where you go it's usually number eight maybe another number but still you have the bite ramps in the prescription you can choose not to have any bite ramps you can choose to place them on the incisors or or the cuspids 
why would you choose one or the other? Well, I'll tell you why a little bit later. Now, this is how it looks like. It, it mimics a little bit the bite turbos uh, for those of you who are doing some, some fixed um, fixed orthodontics. Sometimes we use bite turbos or you could do the same thing with composite that you would build behind the incisors to open the bite. The thing is with the, the, the composite like this, you can use the length you want if you build them yourself. The thing with the bite ramps is that they are three millimeters on the anterior teeth. They change position uh, and the fact that they change position, well, sometimes a patient have a hard time uh, just getting used to it because they're, they're never the same place. They're three millimeters long. What does that mean? Think of it. Think, think about this. If the patient has a five millimeter overjet, don't put any bite ramps. The patient will bite behind the bite ramps and it can even be worse. So think about this, it's three millimeters long. If you really want them, but you have a big overjet, try putting them on the, the cuspids instead. You can choose be between the anteriors or the cuspids. So in these cases where you have a, a, a bigger overjet, not an overbite, a bigger overjet, then put them on the cuspids. Be careful of one thing. Those little spaces are not attachments. Do not fill them with composite. Guess how I know. Not a good day at the office. So they are not attachments. If you are not doing your attachments yourself, if it's your hygienist or your assistant, or just explain to them to make sure they're not confused because it's it looks like a little space for an attachment. So they have to know those are bite ramps. They're just little bumps there, little ramps built in the aligner, but that's it. When you remove the aligner, there's nothing there. And that can be part of the problem. Now let's think a little bit here. Let's go back to our case here, our deep bite case. Now you want to go from there to there. This is what you want to achieve. This is your, your goal, your treatment plan. So how will you get there? What do you want to do? Well, what's again, what's the first thing we want to do with our thumb? When we see a case like this, we want to push, we want to procline the anterior teeth. So think of proclining the anterior teeth. Where does the force come from? This is where it comes from. It comes from the lingual side. So the aligner has to push on the lingual of the incisor. So we have retroclined incisors like this. We have the aligner that goes over and we need that force coming from the lingual pushing on that tooth. Now, what happens if you have a bite ramp there? Now, if you have a bite ramp, you have something that looks like this. Now, look at what it does to the aligner. There's a big void there. There's some air. Now, I don't know if you try to push teeth with air, but it's not really efficient. So this is where the problem is. It really depends on what you want to do with your anterior teeth. If you don't have to move them, if the angulation, the torque is perfect, I have no problem with the bite ramps. But if you want to move the anterior teeth and especially push them from the lingual, you need that surface covered. So you could decide to stage your treatment. You could decide to push and to procline the teeth. And once they're at the right position, then you could add the bite ramp. That can be done. You stage your treatment, but think of what you're doing. Now, if you need force there, if you need force on the lingual surface, you need to cover that surface. If you leave the bite ramps there, you're gonna have, again, a big void, a big space. And it's probably the most critical area. This is where we need the force you have you have a space again you have air so you need something i have a suggestion for a line we could just put some plastic there 
Yes, we could cover the whole surface with plastic and still build that little bike ramp. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. I, you don't, you, you can call it a Reinhardt bike ramp. It's okay. Think of this like the difference of pushing on the incisor with the tip of your finger or with your whole hand. That's the difference with having a bite ramp or not having a bite ramp. This is why every time we work with clear aligners or anything else, you have sometimes to stop and think. Stop and think. And you have to think like, think like plastic. If you think like plastic, it's gonna help you. You're gonna have better result. Think of the force. Think of how you apply the force. And I really like this trick. Just imagine that the teeth are all in soft wax and you want to use your thumb to move the teeth. This trick comes from Jerry Sampson. Oh, and he's full of tricks. <laughs> it's something I use every day, all the time, when I ask myself, hmm, hmm. Hmm, because that happens a lot of time. Then I imagine, what if, what if I wanted to move that tooth with my thumb? Where would I put the force? It really helps me uh, to decide where I'm gonna put the attachments. Also, think about this. It's a very good trick. Now you know everything about bite ram. Do you use them? Are you gonna use them? Well, at least I think you're gonna use them when it's a good time to use them. That's everything I had for you today. My name is Stefan Reinhardt, Director of Education for the Clear Institute. Have fun using bike ramps. If you stayed up to here is because you like this video. Now, if you like this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Just subscribe, click on the bell. You'll be notified every time you have a new video and give us the thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos, we have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel. Also, make sure you visit our website at theclearinstitute.com and stay tuned, get on the list because we're gonna launch soon our e-learning platform with a lot more entertaining education on clear aligners. I'll see you around.